Hello, um, so I don't think I have sat down at all to do a sort of check-in with the books that I have been reading this year, this year, this month. Um, it has been such a rubbish reading month for me, like just figuring out that my reading habits were basically me reading to and from work and I had a good like solid 30 minutes of reading each each way basically most of the time so I was reading like an hour a day and I was powering through books but now like I'm not um so one of the books that I'm reading at the moment is the story of the stone which is part of the readathon that the bookish land is doing so I started off my month reading that and I found it really hard to get into which just made me push reading to the side and obviously like I was just sorting out little things for my flat and going to uni and just yeah just tr just trying to get on board with a new life and you know other life changes and things like that so you know I'd like to put some of it down to that however um also the book has been really tough to get into I'm at a good point in the book now I'm on like chapter five or chapter six um and it's much easier to read um the thing is it's obviously a readathon a read along um it's the first one i've ever participated in there's like part of booktube um and it's a chapter a day so it by the time this goes up i don't know if the book is supposed to be finished i don't, I don't think so but i should be on chapter 13 right now and i'm chapter five so yeah um so yeah i just stopped reading that for a bit and decided to pick up fire sermon but wait a second let me go back to talking about story of the stone um i'm not really sure what the book is about so i can't really like talk say like anything about it currently like in the beginning i was just very very confused as to what was happening um but now it seems to be it seems that it's focused on a family and like the sort of lineage of the family um so it's going down the lines of like cousins and aunts or whatever um i think it's done in a way that the story's fragmented but apparently there is a family tree i'm not sure if there is one in the kindle edition um so i think you are actually able to, to piece together who is who when they're talking about the different characters um so yeah the chapter that i'm in now is okay i just finished the chapter where one of the characters can't remember his name um is falls asleep and is taken away like by a fairy to like another land um it's really like surreal it's weird because i don't read a lot of fantasy i don't read any fantasy actually so i never really encounter things like that um but yeah i found that chapter very interesting and i enjoyed like the sort of concept behind it um but it was also good because it was very easy to digest and understand um but i'm not sure what overall the story is about i know it just focuses on this family and i guess different things um, I will be able to give, I guess, a clearer sort of explanation probably towards the next time that I check in because I am hoping I will know more about the story then. Before I start talking about Bias Sermon, I'm actually going to talk about a poetry book that I read because that's the first thing that I've completed this month. And this is this one, um, so is it 20 Love Poems and a Song of Despair by Pablo Neruda. Um, I mentioned this so so long ago, well was it in my September book haul or the one before that? Um, and I know I picked it up because of, it was something that was mentioned to me like earlier this year. Um, I have to say I found this poetry very different to what I usually consume and it is different to what I usually consume. Um, this is probably like, you know, poetry poetry um, that you would, you know, classify as proper poetry and not like thoughts that's been written down on the page and now is now like Tumblr Insta Famous, which I'm all for. So the book has been translated, so on this side you have the original and then you have the translation in English. Um, I've bookmarked quite a couple of poems, so when I first started reading it I was a bit like, ooh, this isn't for me. But there are some lines in some of these poems which are absolutely stunning that I'm just like, okay. So even if, I think one thing I found about this collection is even if I didn't love the poem as a whole, there were lines from it that I loved. Essentially the, po the book is about, as it says, 20 love poems and then the last poem is this really long poem um, and yes, this is a bit of a despair poem. So yeah, the other poems do really sit there and focus on, focus on love. I think the one thing that stood out for me when I was reading this was, obviously I don't think it's just the translation. I feel like I didn't know that people, you know, because this is a Latin American poet, 
can't remember what, exactly what country he's from. It doesn't say, oh, Chilean. So Chile. Like, people, like, as far out as well in Chile were writing, I don't know, it feels like they were writing in the same sort of way that, like, old English poets wrote. And I was, I've, I don't know, I find that very surprising because what, why would they? It's not even the case that you have the influences so readily available in front of you that you're able to sort of imitate that. Um, what I'm saying might be entirely stupid, but who knows? For example, what I mean is, there's a line in here that says, Oh, the goblets of the breast. Oh, the eyes of absence. Oh, the roses of pubis. Oh, your voice slow and sad. Um, this is from a poem called Body of a Woman. So that's why it's got that, um, those references. I don't know why to me, it just reminds me of like, like poems I'd read when I was in English lit and language and they were just there going like oh ye oh ye and all that sort of stuff so I was a bit like I didn't expect to find that here I mean oh is a common expression but I'm more going about the feeling rather than the actual word it feels very like old English it's very strange overall as a collection I actually liked it I was very intrigued by it um and I have bookmarked so many things in it like I know overall I really enjoyed it even if I didn't feel the strongest amount of connection to it as I usually do with other types of poetry that I consume so I don't know I always say you know it's about relatability and that's probably why I feel so strongly strongly about um collections like Bone or um poems from Rupi Kaur or like um what's the name or I Hate Sin but there's the other one I'll put her up here somewhere um, because I relate to a lot of what they write about like I feel a lot of the sadness they talk about um, this is obviously love poems still so essentially love is you know universal and all the same um, but it's written in such a different way and a lot of it is talking about a lot of it is descriptive rather than talking about the actual pure emotions so I feel like because I didn't like really connect with it I felt a bit like I was detached from it, but at the same time, I could really, really enjoy this. And there were just so many beautiful lines in this. So yeah, really glad that I got to read this and I got through it. The next book is Fire Sermon, which I just finished today. So yes, now we're finally on talking about this. Um, I picked this up, like, well, I've been wanting to read this for such a long time. I finally picked it up and I have mixed feelings about it. It's one of those books that I think I might grow to appreciate. I feel like it's a bit of a slow burner. Um, there's not, it's not very plot driven. It's simply about Maggie um, who has an affair with a poet that she meets, well a poet that she starts writing to. They eventually meet because they do something quite similar and they're both like creatives in that aspect but also I think Maggie teaches and they are both two people who are religious and also married to people who aren't religious. Um, they actually are basically very similar people, they are the same age, they have two kids the same age, I think their grandparents are the same age maybe. Yeah there was a lot of similarities between the two of them um, and you know they start off like writing each other letter emails sorry and then they start writing each other letters and then they move on to phone calls. So some of this book is split up into just you know natural normal storytelling and then it's split up into some emails and letters and then there are just like these chunks of paragraphs or prose where and the author is obviously trying to move time along um, without going into great depth or anything like that so it's written in a really interesting way um, and I actually don't think there's anything wrong with the book there's, there isn't anything I disliked about the book I just didn't close the book and come away with any strong feelings um, it's essentially just a tale of, you know, infidelity and how one deals with it. Um, so Maggie gets married quite young. Um, so it talks about, you know, her getting married really young, um, her relationship with her husband, Thomas. Um, it touches on a bit of like sexual abuse because it's quite evident that he forces her to do a lot of things that she doesn't want to do. He's very aware of that. And then he's obviously very sorry after and all of that jazz. Um, so then it talks about them raising their kids. Again, a lot of this is done in that sort of prose, short paragraph, so just pass away the time, um, just to show, you know, their children are getting older. But it just talks about, like, day-to-day -day life without really going into the deep, like, mundane, gritty details, like, say, um, um, All That Man Is or One Day, like, something like that. It's still focused on those really simple moments in life. There's no, like, exhilarating plot running through this. Um, so then it comes to this point in the book where obviously we might be working with a bit of a different camera angle because my memory card was full and I can't remember where I stopped off about this 
But I think I was saying there's a little talk with her and her husband about, you know, the changes in her, but many, many years after. Um, and then it just talks about like growing older and just, I guess the different um, sort of changes that life brings um, and what happens after her and this guy meet and yeah. There's also bits in there where she's talking about, where she's obviously talking to a therapist, I think, or maybe she's writing to a therapist. It's, just, it's not really clear to me. Um, it's it's an interesting book because it just takes you through this like circle of life and there's a bit in it where they're getting older, they're getting older and it says like, you know, they stop um, like sort of acquiring things it's now like more earmarking things to be like given away so that there's less for their children to do i just wasn't expecting that in the book and i just thought that was so sad and i'm like D does that is that what happens as you get older like you stop wanting to acquire things maybe, maybe that should apply to me um but obviously um so yeah it's an interesting book and i'm not really sure what i thought about it i think Maybe it's just going to take a couple of days to digest and I'm going to think, hmm, what did I really think about this? Um, I just know I didn't love it. I didn't come away from it thinking, oh wow, like five stars. But I know there was no part, there's no part of me that dislikes anything in this book. It was just a different book than I'm used to reading and the different formats were really interesting. She's obviously a really great writer. The, all the different subjects in there are great. It's just, yeah, a bit, hmm, a bit in the middle of it. So that is me for now. Like I mentioned in the beginning, currently reading, we're going to go back to reading um, The Story of a Stone. And yeah, I know I also want to start reading The History of Wolves um, to, I think if I finish reading that, no, if I finish reading that and then start on 4, 3, 2, 1, that will be me done for the Man Booker Shortlist 2017. Um, and then yeah, I can get cracking on the 2018 one because yeah seen the winner now I already know also know about the story of the winning one because I watched a video about it before it was announced that it was the winner, winning book um so yeah all great stuff I'm gonna go now I'm gonna try and film a different video now even though I've already filmed it before but <laughs> such is life I will see you in the next wrap up that I'm gonna do bye hi so I'm super late with filming the end of this wrap up because it is now November um, <laughs> But I just wanted to come in quickly and talk about a couple of books um, because I really haven't read much. The first one I want to talk about is this little one and it's Hopeless Romantic by Dolly Alderton. So this is just a really short story by Dolly um, as part of the Pound Project. Um, and it's just her talking about, I guess, what makes her a hopeless romantic and where she's got it from. Basically talking about her parents or just like the little things in life that has just really made her attached to romanticism. Um, it's really cute. It, honestly, it took me about five minutes to read it, I think. I've read it in Bath. Um, I just really enjoyed it. And as you know from my Everything I Know About Love video, I'm just sort of in love with Dolly right now. So I just um, purchased this to support her. Um, like I said, it was part of something she was doing for the Pound Project. And they are, I think, an independent publisher. Um, but it's like sort of funded by, I think it's Kickstarter or something like that. So I think they will join with someone that's um, quite well known in the industry or that they respect their writing and stuff like that. And then encourage them to write something and then get their fans to purchase it. So then it's done on a sort of scale. So I think you can like contribute like a pound, which is I think the initial... Um, amount you can contribute, or the lowest amount you can contribute, sorry, and then it goes to 5, 10, 20, etc, etc. I think I got the £10 one because, oh yeah, because you get these little stickers, which, fab, great, but this is signed by Dolly. Let me see if I can, I don't know if that came out any clearer, but yeah, it's signed by her, so that's why I got the £10 version. Um, but yeah, um, there's also a link for me to listen to it online, so I'm also going to do that because it's Dolly reading it out. Um, so yeah, I think you get quite a fair bit with the £10 one. I think if you get the £20 one, it goes up to like you get a tote bag and stuff like that, but if anyone watched my moving vlog 
um, video, you will know that I don't need any more tote bags, so I opted out of that one. The next book I want to mention very briefly, and it is because it was so brief, is actually a comic book. So the Sabrina, whatever, scary horror thing is on Netflix. Um, and I was just talking to one of my friends about how scary it was, and she mentioned that if you have Amazon Prime, you can read the Sabrina comics um, for free on the Kindle. So I read the first one just to see more of like what it was actually going to be about as opposed to why is this not like the one I watched when I was a teenager. Um, so I read that. I actually thought it was really good um, but I don't have much knowledge when it comes to comic books or graphic novels so I just read it just to see and I'm going to read the rest of them um, just because even though I find the show so scary I still am like wanting to watch it. I think it's just the hype and wanting to know what everyone else is doing. So the last book I'm going to speak about is The Story of the Stone, which I spoke about earlier. Um, I'm now currently on chapter 19, um, which I think is supposed to be the third week in the readathon. Um, I'm enjoying the book a lot more, a lot more, because I understand what on earth is going on. It's a very interesting book for me because I'm reading it and a lot of the things that's happening in the sort of past chapters that I've read um, are just very like mundane stuff and I don't mean that in a horrible way I mean they're just things that I think are obviously very important to I guess people who are very wealthy in Chinese culture um, but just things that I just wouldn't think would be worth writing about it's very interesting in terms of there were like women who were heads of houses um, and it talks a lot about the servants that they have but actually the servants are really like well treated but it talks about how the women run the households, which I thought was very interesting for a book that would have been written. I don't even know the year that this was um, written, but I will put it on the screen, um, which I thought was actually a very interesting point. Um, but I mean, it writes about things like that, that for me, I guess, as someone who consumes a lot of, I guess, Western literature, I just didn't really understand like why this was important and why it was necessary to have a whole chapter about. But nevertheless, it's actually still interesting to read. Because um, I don't know a lot about Chinese culture, like I don't know anything actually. The only other book that I would have read um, is, oh, the Madeline Fine book. Do Not Say We Have Nothing, um, the one that was on the Man Booker shortlist. So that was, I think I read this that last year. Because this is like my second sort of brush with Chinese literature. Um, and yeah, a lot of it, like the chapter that I'm in now, um, or the chapter that I just finished actually, was about them, they had designed this huge massive garden and the dad was getting the son to go around like naming the places in the garden and writing like little poems for them or little couplets for them and I just thought wow is is this what you do when you're rich and you don't have anything else to do like I was just like what is the point in this um but there is a group for this book, so I am going to ask that question there. Like, I just don't want to seem ignorant, but I just, at the same time, I'm just like, I didn't know that this was, like, so important, but it seems like a really important thing. So for me, I'm reading it and learning a lot of things about, I guess, that side of people in Chinese culture, but I'm also reading it, like, why is this so important? It's, yeah, it's sort of, it's so bewildering to me, and it's very different. Um, but I'm actually really enjoying the book now because, like I said, I know what is going on. But yeah, overall, I don't really have anything more to say about what the book is actually about because it seems the book is taking us through the story of this one child who was born with like this stone in his mouth and he is, I guess, the boy that I'm focused on in the sense that he just seems to be so loved and precious to everyone. He doesn't actually seem to have a bad bone in his body, so it's not even like he's loved by everyone and he's this horrible child. He's actually He actually seems quite cool to me. Um, so yeah, he's very much doted upon by his grandma and like the servants and page boys that they have. They all seem to have this really good relationship with each other, apart from one character who just like rules with an iron fist. Um, but it's sort of following his journey, so when he's like going to school and then not really going to school, he makes a friend at school, there's a bit of an interaction about um, how he's perceived at school, also um, a sort of same-sex relationship but not really. Um, I feel like it it reminds me of um, like Achilles and Patroclus. I never know how to say that, but that sort of relationship that when boys are younger they're allowed to have that sort of same-sex relationship but it's it, obviously as you grow older it would be frowned upon um, 
So it moves through that sort of storyline. It moves from that and then someone dies. It talks a lot about the funeral procession, um, procession, the funeral process and what the kind of different things that they do. There's a lot of interactions between like the family, so the cousins and everything like that. And I quite enjoy that sort of family element there. And then it sort of, it sort of has now moved into this sort of talk about constructing this huge garden, um, which I think is for the maids or the women who are married off when their family comes and visits. I think it's something for them to like sit in and enjoy. It just seems a bit extravagant. I'm just a bit like, this is a bit wild. Um, so yeah, it's the construction of the garden and now the naming of the garden and the bit I've now reached in is, it seems I think the main boy whose name, I, I want to pronounce their names, but I know I'm gonna say it's so wrong, but Bayou, Bayou. Um, it seems that his sister has come back to visit. Um, so that's currently what the, the scene is and it's just a bit emotional because I think she misses her family a lot but you know she's been married off and she's now sort of ruling another household. So for me the story is much about nothing but at the same time it's very interesting it's a very good insight um so I'm, I'm not hating it. Like I said I'm on chapter 19 so I am like miles away from finishing the book. I actually don't think I'm that far from finishing the book this actual book I think I'm about 60% through um, and there are subsequent um, books and I know um, the bookish land who's doing the readathon said that the original author only completed the first 80 chapters of this book so the other chapters are written by someone else and I don't know who that is but considering I'm on chapter 19 worrying about chapter 80 is a bit you know it's, it's, a, it's a bit far in the future for me. So that's it for this wrap up. I feel like this video might not be the shortest wrap up video I've ever done but it definitely has it definitely contains the less least amount of books that I've ever read um, for a while that I can think of actually um, but obviously it was well on this channel. Um, this month I have to read a lot more books because there are books that I need to read. Um, I have like six books that I need to definitely read, I think by the end of, by the 30th of this month actually. So definitely in my next wrap up you'll see, um, I guess, my full thoughts on the story of the stone. I will also probably have watched um, the Bookish Land video on it, just giving me a few more details about like what the book is about, actually about, the purpose, etc, etc. So I will actually be able to give a uh, in-depth, valuable review to you. Um, but yes, until then, I will see you in my next video. Bye.